Welcome to the Be A Brilliant Human podcast. You're in the right place if you're a growth-seeking being who acknowledges the challenges and delights of your humanity on the path to an ever more conscious life. If you want to feel inspired to love and accept yourself, to feel free to be and express you in all your brilliance, if you want to truly value yourself and others and feel energized and alive both at home and in the world, then sit back and take a breath as you explore and grow the brilliance of your beautiful human self with your host, the father of non-personal awareness and creator of the MPA process, Joel Young. Hello, 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 and welcome to episode 39 of the Be A Brilliant Human podcast with me, Joel Young. I'm so delighted that you're here. Now, if you haven't already, I'd love you to hit that subscribe button. And also, I'd love you to get your hands on the MPA process. As the lovely announcer said, I am the creator and father of MPA, which is a simple way to stop taking things personally. In fact, it's a way to let go of all sorts of yucky stuff and let in all sorts of yummy stuff. And in many ways, uh, it's a great, simple, spoken word tool to help you navigate the tricky waters of life and into dreamland. (laughs) And you can get it for free. You just need to go to www.mpa4.me slash NPA sheet or just go to the podcast website www.beabrillianthuman.com and you'll find links for it there and of course it'll be linked in the show notes and also another freebie you can get from me is the unconditional pivot exercise and if you go to episode 27 of this podcast there's a full training on using that so today what's going on today well firstly i'm in quite buoyant spirits because after what is it three and a half almost four months of lockdown it's starting to ease And I've finally been able to come down to my girlfriends. I've not seen her for so long. Uh, So I've been here a week or so, maybe two weeks now. Uh, So wonderful to have human connection again. Hurrah! (laughs) Uh, It's just been, what a journey it's been. I think um, so many different people, so many different stories, fantastic stuff. Um, And today we're in the the realm of relationship stuff, really. Um, I'm going to be talking about uh, what I consider to be an important relationship skill. We're talking about sort of taking yourself out of defense and back into connection. So I think this episode I'm going to talk about, well, defense, what's being defended, what's that all about. Uh, I'm going to share a story of one of my experiences of, of getting into defense and coming out of it and what happened there. And then I want to go through some steps of taking yourself out of defense, uh, which is that relationship skill part. So let's start off with talking about what I mean by taking yourself out of defense. Or what is defense? What does it mean to be defended? Well, I don't know if you've ever had this situation, and I'm gonna I'm gonna use my hallucination skills and say, well, if you're human and you've been in any kind of relationship, chances are at some point you've gone into a defensive uh, position within yourself. In a way, it's it's really about there are times which can come up, you can be triggered by things, but you sort of put up walls of separation in some form, which can separate you know yourself from yourself or yourself from another person. You know, and and often in in sort of intimate relationships in particular, there can be triggers that kick off inside of you. And without you even really having time to think about it, suddenly bang, up go the walls or or some form of defensive stance comes into play. And things can really go to shit in those situations, can't they? I mean, I, I know I've had those situations many, many times. Um, you know, it can go a bit downhill and you, it can end up being very, very painful. And if you don't really address it, it can kind of... Sp- you know, spiral out and things can repeat again and again. And even it can end up in situations where you end up in needing to break up because you can't resolve these inner conflicts, these conflicts with the other person. And a lot of that, not all of it, I'll get to that later, uh, but a lot of that is because we have these defenses inside of us, which were probably put in place, you know, perhaps in, in early childhood or through sort of conditioning from other relationships but it, it really comes down to a place where, you know, it can manifest in different ways. Like you can go into shutdown or withdrawal. That's a very common one that shows up. It can sit, go sort of more outward. It can come up as anger. Suddenly it's sort of the anger comes up and it goes into blame and accusations. 
or sort of a collapse kind of you go into victim mode and as I say, you know, often these these ideas, how we run our relationships are often based on the patterns we see in our parents and those around us. They can also be informed by, you know, you can have uh, there's people I know that have had really good examples in relationship or with their parents relationship. They get into relationships themselves and suddenly they get really awful experiences and then they build up their defenses because I don't want to feel that hurt again is kind of what's happening inside of them. So. Let's talk a little bit. I'm going to share a story about, you know, one of the things that happened to me, because I think within it is is a sense that hopefully you can relate to. Uh, and it gives an idea of, of a situation where I went into defense and then was able to take myself out of it. So this happened pretty recently, actually. I mean, it was during lockdown. And it's one of those things sort of in general when triggers come off. If there's a situation in your life where there's stress around for you or the person that you're in that relationship with, generally stress is going to uh, lower the threshold of your triggers. <laughs> it's like there's already enough going on that we, you know, we don't have as much presence of mind necessarily. If there's other things that are happening in life that are, you know, creating stress on the relationship or even stress in in one of you or the other's life in general. So again, we're sort of several months in into lockdown. Now, just to put that in context, um, I live about sort of four and a half to five hours away from Karen. So we already have kind of a one of those long distance relationship situations. And we, we've managed it really, really well. But, you know, this length of time in unprecedented circumstances and various other things that were happening, it was kind of both of us in a fairly stressy, kind of tetchy situation anyway. And on this occasion, it's like we were speaking at cross purposes. So there was sort of misunderstandings that were that were happening. And the the trigger for me really was that I, I felt really misunderstood or misconstrued. Like, you know, like in my brain, I realized I was like, that's not what I did. <laughs> so in a sense, there was that misunderstanding. And the, the nature of the defense that I went into is is it was significant or it was shown up by the fact that, you know, she just wasn't feeling heard. And I was kind of doing, I guess, what you'd call in, you know, air quotes, stereotype, generalization alert, alert the man thing, you know, becoming logical, analytical. And it's interesting, if you listen to last week's episode, which was about um, the dark side of pride, um, when I was thinking about today's episode and going through, oh, there's a good example there. I thought, oh, there's a classic example, Joel, of you having pride about an identity. Because I like to think I'm good at communicating. I like to think I'm a great listener. And in fact, in my day job working with clients, you know, it's a skill that's really, really, it's there, it's available. I'm a really good listener in that context. And generally in relationship, you know, I still like to think I'm good at that. And but uh definitely the sense of having pride in that was gonna was blocking me in this situation. And of course, you know, it can be very different in you know, in intimate personal relationships. I've got this theory that for all of our all any of you that are maybe therapists or coaches, those kind of things, you're probably aware of this that, you know, you've got 2020 vision with your clients. When it comes to your partner, <laughs> it's like some divine blindness has moments where it takes over because we're all so very human. Hence, be a brilliant human, but ultimately we're human. Um, so it was kind of interesting because I, I had that sense that, you know, I'm a good communicator. I'm doing a really good job. Why aren't you hearing me? <laughs> Hilarious when you think about it. But the clue, of course, is is the impact. You know, she was feeling hurt and unheard by my general approach, which I was, again, unaware of, thinking I was being super clever. But there's this kind of a wonderful statement. I don't know if it comes from, I think it comes from NLP. I can't know the exact source, and I'm going to paraphrase it. It may have been one of these relational books. But it basically says the measure of the success of your communication is the response that you get. And I love that. It's a really humbling thing because... I mean, it comes no matter how technically excellent my communication was, you know, if it doesn't work, it doesn't count for shit. You know, <laughs> if it doesn't work for the other person, you know, I'm all being clever, then, um, you know, and precise and pristine in my language and da -da 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 -da. but if the other person's going, I don't get it, you're not hearing me, then it's ultimately a complete failure and a waste of time. And it's interesting over different relationships because a lot of the relationships I've had over the last, what, 30 years 
have been with people who've sort of, again, work in the same industry as I do. They've read lots of the same books. Uh, doesn't mean they've been successful, obviously. <laughs> but in Karen's case, she's not come from that background. She's got beautiful hearts. She's so really sensitive and empathetic. Um, but she doesn't have the same language around personal development that I do. She's wide open in her mind and all the rest of it. So sometimes I'll use language that, you know, other people who are kind of steeped in this industry are used to. They have the same meanings as I do, but she doesn't. So it's one of those kind of situations where, you know, I was using the techniques, but my heart wasn't there. <laughs> and it was wonderful because she she sort of called me out on it in, in real, again, not with fluffy language, uh, but just really just saying you know I hear the words but I don't feel it you know it feels detached and I could tell there was there was a lot of sort of pain in her because it was something that was very important to her that that she was heard by the man who says he loves her right really normal perfectly understandable stuff and it was you know direct enough and just straightforward enough that it, it that sort of interrupted me it's like bang hang on a minute Joel um, it got me to really check in and and I realized I could feel I could feel the walls in me. The walls had come up. You know, I'd been a bit unconscious well, I'd be completely unconscious about it, but that often when you find you you wake up to what's going on, you realize that you were kind of aware that they were there already. And I sort of said to her, I think this is a bit later, so it's like I I wanted to say, I am Iron Man. <laughs> For you, uh, for you, Marvel fans, Iron Man wears his iron suit and becomes a superhero, uh, and he's also a bit of a dick. So. <laughs> so, I am Iron Man was my kind of oh, my moment of realization. But I checked and I noticed the walls, and I realized that there was kind of a lot of the tells in there that inner struggle. So, in one sense, I was kind of I was kind of pissed off at myself, I guess, because you know it wasn't being effective. Um, also, what can often happen when you when those walls come up or the defences come up, you can go into projected expectation, which basically means I was expecting her. <laughs> she should bloody well understand my clever language, <laughs> and she's not. How frustrating. You know, really unfair stuff. So again, lots of frustration coming up, up and ultimately a disconnection. You know, it ended up with that conversation um, at that point feeling very disconnected. She was feeling disconnected from me. I was feeling disconnected from her. And ultimately, I was feeling disconnected from me. And and it's that moment where you kind of have that opportunity to wake up. And it kind of dawned on me, you know, this isn't working. Not the relationship isn't working, but this my, me, this me that I'm being isn't working. You know, it's 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 not what I want. It's not who I want to be. You know, all all the positive intention behind the the careful, clever language to try and be self responsible and all the rest of it, all that kind of good stuff. And by the way, I'm not knocking those um, those language frames that you get in relationship techniques that, that, that you know they can be really good but it's like it's like when you learn to paint you can learn to paint things really accurately and then you then if you're a turner you've got to throw it out of the window and use that the intention the essence of that to inform you know beautiful expressions which wasn't what I was doing in the moment so it, it wasn't who I wanted to be it wasn't what I wanted to happen and and so I had to really sort of acknowledge that and then ask the, the really obvious next question which is what do I want you know well I want I want to hear her I want to really, like, really hear her. I really want to, I don't want to be the man that hears her, his woman. You know, I know it's very possessive, but there you go. It's like, I wanted, to, that's who I wanted to be. That was what I really wanted. And then, of course, you have to go, well, then, you know, I need, there needs to be a shift. And there needs to be a shift in me. And this is one of those situations where there are lots of situations where, you know, you, you can have a relational dialogue, but there are some times when you just got to say, you know, I'm going to take responsibility for my communication and do something about it. So, of course, then I need to ask myself, well, what needs to happen, you know, in order for me just to drop these walls, to open my heart, to just uh, relax and genuinely come back into a space of empathy here? So in a way, in that moment, sort of all that happened pretty quickly of just the realizations of what was going on and what needed to happen, I was actually able to drop my walls and resolve it. I sort of softened, my heart opened. Um, I was able to hear her, not just with, yes, I hear you. <laughs> yes, I hear you, but not really. But actually really hear what was going on for her, which meant that she could relax and open. Um 
you know, and, and then there was connection. There was connection. Well, I started off with actually connecting to myself, to my own heart. Then they opened the door for that connection to come back between both of us. And she felt heard, which was what I really wanted and also clearly what she wanted. So I'm going to break this down and talk about the, you know, what are those what are those steps if I break them into sort of logical compartments and give you some suggestions? I thought that would be a good idea. So we'll do that next. Uh, before we get there, remember, you know, if if you love this, I would love for you to, to share this episode. I think it's a really important episode. Um, you can do that via the website, www.beabrillianhuman.com. For this specific episode, you just put slash 39 and you'll find the show notes there for this. Um, you know, make sure you subscribe if, you, if you're enjoying this. All right. So let's get into the breakdown of, you know, how you can take yourself out of defense and back into connection. <laughs> Okay, so before we get into taking yourself out of defense and back into connection, I want to reiterate a distinction that I just made, which is, you know, this this is for situations where, well, you know, sometimes there's a time where there's you're going to need relational support to get through the stuff of life. There's those kind of situations. What I'm talking about here is often those in-the-moment times where there's a sense of, a, or you get to a point of awareness that you're triggered and how you, how you take yourself out of it in those situations. And that's very different from some of the deeper seated stuff. And definitely, I think the key thing I wanted to sort of highlight here, but I'm not talking about where you're in perhaps um, an abusive situation and, you know, then I'm encouraging you to take responsibility for the abuse that you're receiving. Um, because when you're in an abusive situation, you know, your triggers, which are defensive triggers, can be kicking off with very good reason. Um, because you're not dealing with somebody who's, you know, also looking for a positive outcome. They're just looking to do harm. So I felt it was really important. And again, as someone who's experienced abuse in different forms, um, you know, over my life, it's it's dear to my heart, that topic. And, and I've had to really learn not to overtake or self-responsibility or overdo self-responsibility to the point where really it's about me colluding with the the harm so be really aware of that that this is i'm talking in today's episode about situations where you know assuming that both of you are basically in a healthy situation just having a very human uh, struggle and where you find yourself in some defensive stance uh, that just isn't helping you both get where you want to go all right, so that point being made, let's go to the steps. The first step, if you remember my story, was was actually coming into awareness. The fact is, if if you're in defense and you've got no awareness of it, you know, you don't really have a choice. The whole thing about these defensive responses is that they're they're triggered, you're triggered into an unconscious, um, pre-formatted state that's going on. And generally, if, if you don't get to a point where you come into awareness about it, then you're just going to continue to be in that defensive stance. And the chances are that things are going to escalate. Um, so one thing that can be a really good practice is, is to get to know sort of the nature and the flavor of your both your defensive triggers and your defensive responses. So I know there's certain things in my life that tend to trigger me. And, and this was a good example, I suppose. And I'm coming to understand it more, you know, in, in this situation, this new situation is, you know, that if I feel like I've been misinterpreted or misunderstood, and this was a really big lesson out of this experience for me, it's like then that tends to trigger my Iron Man. Um, but knowing that, having awareness around it means that I can notice it much earlier and go, oh, it's that thing where I'm feeling like I'm being misinterpreted. Perhaps that's not the case, rather than me just going into sort of put my Iron Man suit on and become a dick. <laughs> you know, so that 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 pre pre practiced awareness of the things that trigger us and how we tend to respond to that is gonna it's gonna forearm you if the thing comes up in a live situation. And again, as I said before, if there's more stress around in general, there's stuff going on um, in either of your lives, then those things tend to be nearer the surface. So just really sort of taking time to sort of, uh, you know, take an inventory of the things that tend to trigger you and how you respond to that so that when they can go, oh, it's that thing. Now you're at a point where you have more awareness and are at more choice. And the other side, which I don't think is talked, I've never heard anyone talk about this, but it occurred to me is, is to consider what are your awareness triggers. So we tend to think about our, the triggers that, that take us into defense or into reaction. 
Um, but there are also things that can help us to to snap out of it. So it's good to know that, like, what it is that will help you to to jolt you out of that unconscious behavior. Now, just a note here, I think that's important is um, I did episode number six actually was about beating yourself up versus acknowledging your crappy behaviors. So I'm definitely leaning into the acknowledging your crappy behaviors and not beating yourself up. Now, I did say that as part of the story, I was kind of pissed off with myself. Um, but in my inner experience, that wasn't like a full on self berating. So coming into awareness, you know, it, c- it can be, you know, a bit stinky. Really, It's not a nice thing to wake up to. Oh, you know, I'm being I'm being rubbish here. Um, but that's your choice point where you can go in. Oh, I'm awful. I'm stupid. I'm no good. That's just going to you know, elicit even more defense in you. You're going to go polarized inside yourself. Um, you know, it's going to hurt more. You're, you're less likely to be resourceful in how you come out of it. But that's very different from going, ah, oh, yeah, you know, just acknowledging it, just going, ah, oh, you know, I get it. You know, that's just one of my, um, you know, one of my ways of responding that I've I've learned historically, which probably isn't going to serve me right now. And again, there's another episode I talked about, you know, how to forgive yourself. And that's a point where, you know, a bit of radical self-acceptance, radical self-forgiveness can be really handy in those situations. So, yeah, so practice under sort of learning what are your defensive triggers, what are your defensive responses, and start to notice how, where has it been successful where you snapped out of it and come into awareness. And again, just that that power of aware, awareness is a really sort of profound thing if you can sort of load yourself up with it so that when the situation arrives in the heat of the moment, those things are sort of um, available, much more available to you so you can come into a more resourceful state. Now, once you've got awareness, then you have a choice. And this is the next number two, really, in our step-by-step. It's kind of a three-step approach, um, is you've got to make a decision. You've got to have an intention. You know, fundamentally, you need to decide that you want to shift this. You want to come out of defense. Again, in my story, it was that realization that this isn't working. It's not what I want. Um, and that's that's so important. And again, um, episode five is about making the decision to let go. That's a really good episode to go back to. This is a part of the equation that you find challenging. Um, that talks about how you can really get into the space where you can make that decision quickly and go, yep, I'm ready to to let this go. Because then you've opened your doors to change and, you know, you've got a, a direction that you know you want to go, which means you need to ask that question, which I think is a really powerful question in general. But, you know, what do I really want? You know, my question to myself, well, no, what do I want? This isn't working. It's not what I want. What do I want? And that clarification of your intention is, is again, really powerful for lining all of your inner resources to get behind you in taking you to where you want to go. For me, it was, and it will, I imagine it will often be this. I think it is in my life often this. It's, you know, I want connection. You know, I want, I want to feel connected to myself and to the other person. So what do you really want is a good question to ask yourself. And the other one, going back to, again, last week's episode and the, the pride, often these defensives, these defensive strategies are based on that pride in an identity, which has been, you know, it's been humiliated. So the other side of humil- humiliation is humility. So you need to ask yourself, am I willing to drop these walls? Am I willing to be vulnerable and to admit that, you know, I've got these walls up, I've been an ass, you know? Uh, yeah, you're right. I I didn't, I wasn't hearing you. All of those things that they're actually, my experience of those is when, when I actually do it, it feels weirdly wonderful. <laughs> I don't know if you've ever had that experience, but it's kind of weirdly wonderful because the story before that moment is, oh, this is going to be terrible. I'll look stupid. All of those pride-based ideas. But when you say it, it's like that relief of just that sort of the power of confession and admission to yourself and to the other. And and it opens you into a, a sort of the, the power of vulnerability and in a way really begins that process of, of opening. And in many ways, a lot of the time, those two steps will be enough. Just the admission of it, the willingness to change, the decision to let go, 
that can do the job. It, the the defences can come down, and you can open into a space where you can genuinely connect. And sometimes it needs a little help. So step three is to use some kind of intentional technique. Now, for me, my go-to technique obviously is is MPA, the MPA process. I love it in this kind of situation because it's something that that is really quick, doesn't require much. You just need to get a sense of what you want to work with. Um, and you can also do it in your head. Now, for the most part, if you do any of my trainings, I'll say do it out loud and whatever you possibly can do it out loud. But if in the middle of a heated moment with your with your loved one, it may not be the best time to you know, <laughs> to say things out loud in, in that way. Um, so and, and the way that it works, of course, is it it helps you to to not take things personally. And again, a big trigger for these defenses is that you take something personally. That was an example there in my story of where, you know, her interpretation of what I'd said didn't align with mine. I took it personally, felt she was thinking things about me, how very dare she, you know, that I didn't think were true because my pride told me otherwise. You know, it's a classic take things personally. So it'll help you stop taking things personally. And the other thing about MPA in this kind of situation is, yes, you can you can let go. You can use to let go of that pride, that holding on, that defense, whatever it is. But also in relation to your intention, what you'd like to allow to come, as we say in MPA, it helps you to let in what you want. So you can either use it in that moment to let go of the yucky stuff, let in the yummy stuff. And often you can do both. You can let the old stuff go and let the new stuff in, just do two processes. So that's a really good tool. And again, you can get hold of it absolutely free um, from, I'll put it in the show notes for today, www.beabrillianthuman.com slash 39. Um, and you can download that for free. And you know, if you really want to learn how to use it and bring it into your life, then obviously I'm going to encourage you to do the training, um, which is fabulous. The first step would be the basic training, which if you sign up for free, you'll that there's a really good offer right now for um to get that for for very little money really for in terms of your investment and that will give you really the tools it's called basic training <laughs> because you know you can get the sheet and you know you can do good but there are so many traps people fall into or there's things that don't get understood the the training gives you what you need to get going and to start bringing it into your life to make a difference in your life and of course when you make a difference in your life you stop taking things personally that's going to be a lot less defense in you and a lot nicer for those around you. Okay, I digress. So decision and um, intention is important. The intentional techniques we've got to now, MPA, and some other ones that you can do in the moment. So breathing, so, so powerful, so simple, so available. Just take a breath. If you've got one and two set up where you're in awareness, you've made a decision, it can sometimes just be a matter of taking a breath, breathing in, and just intentionally dropping the walls. Um, if it's more of a heated situation, like there's a lot of anger come up, then it may be that you need to use some kind of grounding technique. So grounding, I'm, I'm mindful in my experiences with Karen that I, I would use that word with her and she'd go, what do you mean? <laughs> so it's it's easy to make the assumption that people understand it. So grounding really is about sometimes when we when we get flipped out, it's like our energy leaves our body. It's like we, we're just not present. We're not there. Grounding simply means that you bring your awareness back in to sort of be present with you. And there are some great sort of visualizing grounding techniques. You can literally, in your breath, bring your attention down to your feet, down to, the, down to your root, which, you know, between your legs, and then down to your feet, and even down deep into the ground. With a few breaths, you can just bring sort of bring all of your awareness into the body, down, 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 like grow roots into the earth. Find a, an imaginary big boulder right at the core of the earth and wrap your roots around it. We'll just bring you back into you because, again, if you're kicking off with all sorts of things, you can be out there in, in la-la land or, <laughs> or angry land or or defense land so some kind of grounding is really good just to bring yourself in and again that can be enough just to get you present and to drop things in a way you know a lot of at this point if you're in the momentum of some kind of defense then whether it's mpa or breathing or grounding or whatever you use um, or even just the act of awareness and decision is kind of a pattern interrupt because if you think about it it's like you're you're traveling along you make some unconscious in a decision to go into some survival strategy some defense that's worked in the past 
and and you ricochet off in that direction with some momentum and it's, it's a pattern it kind of churns over this then that then this then that then this then that all of which are unhelpful so a pattern interrupt is something which sort of breaks that sort of repetitive cycle so pattern interrupts are used as part of phobia cures in NLP. Um, they're used in um, all sorts of ways, really. But it's it's like it's something which says just stop, break, break the pattern. Um, you know, and and you can even use really silly pattern interrupts. So if you find you can't get out, you could even stop. Just in this, you'd have to have not much self consciousness, and you might want to warn your partner. You might say, "Okay, I'm in defense. I'm going to do a pattern interrupt." Don't mind me. Stand up, jump about, go, ah, shake your hands in the air. You know, that it's just like you wouldn't do it in that normal situation. So it might interrupt the pattern and just get you to break the sort of momentum of, of the defense that's going on. Now, again, sometimes there are situations where maybe both of you have got heated and one of the best things to do is to step away. And if you take some step away time, there's a bit more space to do some sort of deeper work. So um, journaling is a great thing to do. So let's say you've had a big Barney and you, you both sort of scatter off to your different parts of the house. That's a chance then for you to have the space to come into that awareness, make the decision and then do a bit of journaling work is a great thing to do. So just write, just just get a piece of paper or a, a pad or even do it on your laptop if that works better for you and just just start writing out you know what's going on and and just sort of churn it through in a way which expresses it journaling uh, we do a lot of that in our heads but but the act of literally getting it onto paper or onto a screen in some form it, it kind of connects energy through and gets it out and because you're you're reading as you're writing it's it's more of a witness state than than generally in in your head and there's other things, again, along the line of pattern interrupts. Some people will use exercise, go out for a run or do some yoga or, um, you know, or, or get on, do some bench presses, whatever is your thing, take your bike out. Uh, these things can be pattern interrupts and they're quite good for, for many people. That sort of physical act um, of doing the exercise can, well, not only give you some great, you know, endorphin boosts, which can shift your state, um, but also just get your mind out of the way and then allow things in a more sober way and i use the word sober because in that defense it can be like you know being high <laughs> you know as the rappers say she's tripping <laughs> it's because you're high on the on the drugs of um of ego of of pride of all of those things so it's it's exercise is another great way to do it again i mentioned at the top of this um podcast about the unconditional pivot exercise one of the freebies that's a fantastic one because it literally is about shifting the state it helps you uh, self responsibly to go from a sucky situation or a crappy situation which you know you can describe the crappy situation and then get focused on what you want to feel so that piece of what do i want it takes you from the the yuckiness to that space and then kind of helps you to really fully step into um, those more positive states, which is going to give you that resource to be able to look at things in a different way and change things. And of course, there's loads of other modalities. MPA is just one of many amazing modalities. Um, EFT, I think, is a good one. I don't use it. I've never quite got to grips with EFT, but I'm not knocking it because there's loads of people I know have great success with it. And it's one of those um, you know, EFT stands for emotional freedom technique, and it's one of those tapping therapies. And I, I love it in a, in the sense that it's something again that you can do in the moment. It's something you can just you know, especially if your partner knows you do that. So I'm just going to do some tapping, and then you know, so I can come into my own centeredness and and give you what you need. And I realize that I'm not it would be quite a good reframe and do some EFT. Uh, the Sedona method is one that I've used, and I'll link. I'll do links to all of these. Um, let's see if I can dig out some links to these and put them in the show notes. Uh, the Sedona method is again uh, very similar to MPA, that it's a spoken word process. It's an invitation to let go, um, and can be done simply and quickly. Another one that I've used a lot and and love is the work of Byron Katie. Again, that would need more time, um, but it's a chance, as Byron Katie would say, to put your thoughts on paper and question and ask yourself, you know, is that really true? Which is a really great question to ask when you're in your defense. You know, she didn't understand me. She's misinterpreting me. 
Well, is that true, really, Joel? Uh, well, if I really ask myself honestly, no. Or at least I can't know that it's true, but I'm convincing myself that it is. And then within the work of Byron Katie, you get to turn it around and 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 realize the pain that it's causing you to hold those scary thoughts. So, and I'm sure there's loads more, you know, of, of different techniques. Whatever technique you have, basically, I'm saying is once you come into awareness, make a decision. Um, if it doesn't drop automatically, then do some kind of intentional technique to help you move forward. All right. So one more thing I want to cover and we'll wrap up. So let's get into that now. OK, so the last bit I wanted to talk about is these, this, this thing that I've laid out for you is really good. And it's going to do a great deal of 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 work for you in most situations. But I wanted to acknowledge that there are times when, you know, that's not going to cut it. So if you find that this kind of the trigger that you've got going on comes up again and again, and maybe you can shift it, but it comes back and it comes back and it's back almost like it feels unchanging and happens all the time, then the chances are there's something deeper going on. It's like just a bit of awareness and, and some process work with your by yourself isn't quite seeing through it. So often, I mean, that's, that's again, that's a chance where you go, oh, beat myself up, I'm no good. That's not what I'm saying. I'm saying we all have times when we're blind to ourselves because the defense is coming from something that is maybe traumatic or deeper. And, you know, sometimes we just need help. So I want to really encourage you, if you find that, that, you know, your self-work isn't quite getting to it or it's still causing you and maybe those around you some suffering, then that's where you know, need to go a bit deeper with that humility and acknowledge that you need help from someone, preferably a professional. So again, that's something that you can do with me, my one-to-one coaching practice uh, where I can really support you to look at that deeper stuff and clear it and have that 2020 vision that sometimes we don't have on ourselves. Um, you can check out my one-to-one stuff, joelyoungmpa.com slash sessions. You'll find details there. And, you know, you can just, if, if you're thinking about it, on that page, you'll see a button where you can book just a 15-minute a clarity call with me and we can have a chat and see if if it's right for you to, to sort of, you connect with me in that setting. Um, or if there's something else that maybe will serve you better, I can um, sort of send you in that direction if that feels like it's going to serve you better. But again, get help. And sometimes getting help doesn't necessarily mean, you know, you don't have to commit to the full uh, you know, number of sessions with me, but just having a chat can be something that can help you move in the right direction. So I think we're there. We're there for episode 39. So some honorable mentions, I brought up some other episodes that would be really good. So I guess extra, if this is something that, that interests you or or some of that's an issue for you, definitely check out episode 38, which is about um, the dark side of pride. Then episode five, which is about making the decision, decision to let go. Um, if you tend to beat yourself up when you're busted on your shit, <laughs> and episode six is going to be really help, which is, which is again, beating yourself up versus acknowledging your crappy behaviors. And if it's the area of, of listening and really hearing, then episode eight, which is, you know, what do they really mean, talks about how those misinterpretations of people can really affect ourselves as we label their um, their behaviors. And then I also um, mentioned how to forgive yourself, which was episode 36. So lots of related episodes this week. Um, I hope this has given you something to uh, to help you in your life, something of value, and that some of these insights um, really can make a difference to how quickly you can come out of defense and back into connection. Uh, let me know. I'd love to hear from you. What's your experiences of of um, coming out of defense, going into defense, getting stuck in defense even? Um, there's always a post on MPA Rocks, which is the Facebook page for MPA, which announces each episode. You can comment there. You can send me an email, joel at nonpersonalawareness.com, or you can leave me a voice message at beabrillianthuman.com. There'll be a big button there where you can just leave me a voice message or get in touch through social media media as ever i'm generally at joel young mpa across social media on youtube it's just youtube.com slash joel young and the again the facebook page on 
Facebook page on Facebook. Where else would it be? Is MPA Rocks. Brilliant. Okay, have a fantastic week. I'm looking forward to uh, you tuning in next time. Um, subscribe if you haven't. That's me. I'm out of here. All that remains is to cue the moo. Mm-hmm.